Can you describe the moment you realized that your son might have hearing difficulties? So it was actually a conglomeration of a few months. Um, and it was hard. Uh, we didn't find out until he was three and a half because he masked it so well by always reading our lips. There was never delay. Um, he always had these very bright eyes and, and answered us right away. And I started to suspect, well, first of all, he was falling a lot. Um, and uh, now I know it's because of you know, hearing loss. Um, there is also a loss of balance in the ears. And um, I had taken him to several pediatricians and they told me that he uh, is bilingual, he's, he's a seven child, it's, it's going to take, you know, boys take longer to speak because he, he had delayed speech. And then I specifically remember um, there was a time when he was around three years old, three, three and a half, um, I was speaking to him quite loudly from behind and he, he did not hear me whatsoever. And so then I grabbed him and I started speaking into his ear quite loudly and he did punch. And that's when I knew that he did go and his ears tested because um, actually he left the hospital and got to the infant hearing screen. What factors did you consider when designing on a cochlear implant for him? Well, so we live in Europe and so um, I was always leaning towards a European company just because I thought it would be easier for um, Innovation. I wasn't so interested in having so many gadgets or uh, parts to it. I just wanted a robust and it, um, <laughs> that did break down. And, and uh, I spoke to a lot of audiologists. I got on a lot of chats and reviews and um, spoke to several surgeons as well. And finally, we went to the altar. Does that sound like, do I sound like Papa? Does he sound like Papa? No! <laughs> Matthias, do I, found, do I sound silly? I sound silly? I sound silly? Can you talk about support systems or resources that were most helpful for Matthias and your family? Absolutely. So, um, this is a very good question and it's extremely important to have resources and support systems in place um, when you find out something like this. And locally, the Oigo was extremely helpful. Um, Dale Sindel, um, I got in touch with her weeks after I found out, and she was extremely supportive and put me in touch with a group of, of, of families that were uh, in the same situation and, and just we all shared ideas, and, and that was it. it was extremely helpful. I also took, we also took my son to John Tracy Clinic in Los Angeles the first summer. We spent three weeks there in family camp. Um, where um, there was a lot of support, emotional as well as learning support and how to get my, my son to speak. And then the following year, we went to Clark um, Center for the Deaf in New York City and we did a summer school there. So at the very beginning, um, we, we, we just wanted to inundate him with language. And, um, but the local support, uh, I think it's extremely important to have local support. And that's where I that we were going to be so helpful. What advice would you give to other parents who are just beginning a similar journey with their child? I guess the biggest advice I would give is just to inundate your child with language in any way, shape, or form. Just, and this, and this is something that told Eligo uh, and John Tracy Clinic and Clark um, taught me is the uh, anything you see, you, you just speak it, you know? And I always remember this time I was in a taxi cab with my son and obviously the taxi driver didn't know about his profound hearing loss and I was just describing everything I saw out the window. Look at the sun, look at the clouds, see how they're moving. And the taxi driver said um, in Spanish, woman, just leave the poor kid alone and please just shut up. <laughs> he just had no idea um, what I was doing. Um, and so I just laughed and brushed it off. But um, just inundating language. Boy, does that boy look Happy? Does he look happy? He look. Does he look happy? Help! Help! He's saying help, help. So, do you think he looks scared, or do you think he looks excited? He looks scared. He looks scared. Why do you think he's scared? Because there's a lot of fire. Because there's a lot of fire. 
How do you feel about his progress and where he is today? I'm so proud of Matias. Um, you know, he went from uh, three and a half, uh, not being able to speak a word, and having lost, he started with losing. Let's talk about from uh, in vitro. He, he lost almost four years of his hearing life, and he has completely caught it up um, by just, uh, well, first of all, being such a smart boy, but like we, we did a lot of reading with him, and like I said before, just all the, um, just speaking and speaking and inundating him with language, as well as the programs with Tate Wigo and John Tracy Clinic and um, Clark Center for the Deaf. Uh, and now he's thriving, more than thriving. Uh, he's in fifth grade and in tests and to 11th grade reading level. Um, he's a straight A student. Uh, super curious and smart, and I couldn't be better. So tell me what happened, Matias. Boob on your neck. You have a boob on your neck? Because I was, I was spinning. You, you were spinning? I was spinning so fast. And it hurt my neck. And hurt your neck? What's this? An old fella. What's an old fella? old friend. So this tree is your old friend? Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. He lets me rest on him. Aww. What were some of the biggest challenges you have faced with your cochlear implant and hearing aid, and how have you overcome these challenges? Um, so when I was little, and I was in school, I'd have problems hearing and understanding of teachers. I've overcome this challenge because They'd send a learning support to be with me for an hour every day. And we'd play games together that involved speaking and listening. Uh, another way I overcame those challenges was I learned to lip read. Despite starting to hear at four, you are an excellent reader. What helped you become such a good reader? So um, during COVID, when we were all quarantined, uh, every day my mom would make me read an hour um, just like that every summer I would read for an hour as well and it helped me the power to read what advice would you give to other kids who are going through a similar journey with hearing loss and cochlear implants um, I would recommend reading a lot out loud to their parents because that gives them some practice as well as trying to talk a lot in class or explain your thinking. Um, like one of the ways I have a very good vocabulary is because I read a lot out loud and yeah.